So thankfully, Gemini 2.5 Pro was updated. They made a massive mistake, in my opinion, pushing out 0506 and overriding basically 0325, unless you did very particular things, which I appreciate people in Discord for pointing out to me. But I actually had production workloads that were on 0506, and those were impacted. I know that's on me. I should not have actually been using a preview model for production, but I didn't think that they were going to just wipe that endpoint out for me. So what this does is they claim that it's state-of-the-art on HLE, IDER, and GPQA. It supports thinking budgets, which I actually really appreciate. All of my tests that I'm going to be showing here today have a 16K thinking budget, just to kind of normalize that. Same cost, and then it closes the gap on the 0325. You do really need to appreciate Logan and Google for calling out that 0506 was a regression. 0325 was my favorite model for probably a month and a half. Like, I loved it. And the 0506 came out, and it just felt like a huge regression. And I really hope that 0605 actually proves to be a major improvement. It does say closing the gap in 0325. So I will say after using it a day or so that I am on the fence on whether it is as good as 0325 from a feeling standpoint. But from a number standpoint, it actually has improved substantially. You know, here's the, some of the stuff that they claim. They have a whole blog post out. They talk about it jumping to the lead on Web Dev Arena. And then they talk about it actually having a 24-point ELO, ELO score jump on LM Arena. Now, the problem with these is there's the Arena side, which is all done in the web. You're kind of looking at it. You, it's very different than can it actually work in an AI coding assistant, which is what I care about. So all of my tests are going to be geared towards that and what we talk about today. And I just want to do, I do want to point out, Gemini 2.5.0506, I ran a huge swath of benchmarks across a bunch of the videos I've done. And its tool calling failure rate went through the roof on me, which really decayed its scores. 0.325 had diffing problems. It really did have diffing problems, but it was nothing on the level of 0.506. This is a task that I posted about on X. If you're not following me on there, I'd appreciate if you thought considered following me. But this one, typically, when I run this particular test, it's like 80K, you know, 50 cents, something like that. But 0506 was getting in such a loop that it racked up almost $5 in cost. I actually ended up stopping it because it was just infinitely failing on itself. Very consistently doing that. Even at the ideal temperature, which I identified as 0.5 which I will say this model has a different ideal temperature, which I think is going to be very interesting. So what I'm going to talk about today is sort of the progression from 0506 to 0605. And then I will talk about how it works mainly in AI coding tools. And I'll just show you a couple one-off things. It's not going to be a, a ton there. This is an interesting candlestick graph. What I've put together here is sort of a view of how temperature impacts its score that it gets in my system that I've ran. As you can see, the ideal score is 0 0.7. The ideal temperature is 0 0.7. And then you can kind of see the variance that you get. 0 0.72, which is the one right to the right, so you can kind of see that here, this yellow dot, actually had a bit more variance in the test that I ran. Again, there's always margin of error here, because if you're thinking about it, uh, you can basically get, you know, plus or minus a few points here or there. And most of them are pretty tight margin of errors. So we, we look at even the zero temperature. We're sitting around the 560. We're looking at 0 0.5. So I jumped up. I didn't crawl, uh, test across this, but it was very clear to me it was increasing up until the point that about 0 0.7 is where I landed. And then I started, I went over to 0 0.9 and you can kind of see it started to decrease again. So this was an interesting test. So I actually spent a significant amount of time running many iterations of my evals across these different temperatures in Rue code. And the variance here leads me to believe that around 0 0.7 is the best temperature. That was idea, That was the highest score that I was able to get out of all of the runs was on 0 0.7. And it was very consistently, like it was within a few points there, uh, just to kind of 
give you that kind of information as we go forward. So everything that I'm going to be doing beyond this point, it's going to be tested at 0 0.7. Here's another way to look at that. So as you can kind of see um, from the right side, we've got zero, which has got the lowest score. And then you can kind of see it kind of arc around. This is the average across all runs. Uh, so you can kind of see 0 0.7 kind of landed in this really nice um, top point. And 685 is a very respectable number on my eval. So I was very impressed with that. And to put that in perspective here, you can see that the 0506, I actually have a typo here. I need to fix that. Uh, this one was actually at 52% the last time I ran it, which was literally two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago at this point. And it went from 52% to 68.5% in root code. A lot of this was because of tool call failure. So this was basically unusable in my opinion. Um, and I find more and more that, you know, even though the quality of the code that it's outputting was good, it's also, you have to also take into account cost and the number of failures and time. So at some point I wanna to try to figure out a better way. Over time I'll get better at, uh, at kind of collecting and presenting this data. But I actually wanna figure out a way to kind of also equate this to like cost, value, time, all of that stuff. Because in my opinion, even though it scored 52%, which is typically, you know, usable, it is unusable from the fact that it was many times more expensive than its nearest competitors and the time it took to complete was ridiculous. One other thing to look at here is it actually does step up above my 0325, which was the first version I really liked in root code. This one actually went from 63.1% to 68.5%. And note, I'm just going to, I'm summarizing this. So the scores are actually 685, but I just put it in percentages to make it a little bit easier to kind of graph out here. Now, the other thing I do want to talk about here is the Klein version of this. Because Klein doesn't allow you to have a temperature uh, setting on this, it's most likely using zero temperature. Last time I looked in their code, it was just defaulting to zero temperature. If you go back to my original average per temp, you can kind of see between 0 0.5 and zero, you know, it's 572, 560. Klein ended up with a 572. So it would have been, you know, 57.2%. So it really is important in at least my way of testing that temperature matters a lot. Because now what we've got is we've got Gemini 2.5 Pro sitting pretty well up there with sort of the Claude models. Uh, it's respectably up there. You know, it's right around Sonnet 3.5. It's up there with uh, GPT 4.1 and Windsurf, that type of stuff. You know, there's not a huge difference between 68.5 and even the top one at 75%, which is the Claude 4 Sonnet. Now, I'm going to go back here just a second. The one thing I would also note is the variance that I got here. You know, we did actually get slightly above 700 one time with the 0 0.7 temperature. But most of the times we kind of sat around the 680, 690 standpoint. Uh, so this is, I also tried testing above 0 0.9 temperature and the quality degraded drastically to the point where I'll actually show you here. Um, this, I'll just skip ahead to this slide. What I actually started getting was this weird, like um, basically H, you know, in characters in my Python that I was actually running. So it would like generate like weird things that weren't runnable. And it would actually start creating files that uh, should have been in a folder, but yet it created them as a, you know, a file with a weird extended name. Now, the one thing I do want, I did want to run this in Winsor, but I worry that I can't really tell what version of Gemini 2.5 Pro is actually running here. Now I would assume this is the latest 0605 one, but I didn't want to actually put those numbers up. I did run them and they did perform respectably, but I didn't want to put those numbers up because I just can't guarantee that these are the absolute, uh, that's the absolute newest version of the model. Uh, based on the performance of it, I think it probably is, but I don't know that for certainty. Uh, Logan also goes on to say a little bit around how it actually I, I care about this a lot because it's like how much, how good is it at pulling stuff out of information when the context is like really large? 
So you can see the green bar here that he's talking about here is the newest uh, Pro Preview 0605. And it is substantially better at retrieving, they call it needles as shown here. So I was actually surprised by this. And truthfully, as I was coding with it on Friday, it did feel like it had pretty good recall. Like I typically would start new chats around 300K. So I didn't run it super high. Uh, but I did actually enjoy working with this model to a certain degree. It's just one of the things that I'd say is like, maybe I'm getting spoiled, but even though the model is fast, it is still slower to work with, in my opinion, than using Claude code with uh, Claude four Sonnet. It, there's just a lot of thinking that actually does. And, and I know you can tweak the max thinking tokens, but I did actually run through some variants with uh, the number of max thinking tokens and found that if I have thinking really low, that actually the output quality is, you know, you would understandably know this, but the output quality of the eval score is actually lower. So I landed on that 16K as being kind of the sweet spot because I tried more, I tried less and both, you know, there was marginal difference on increasing it, but on lowering it, there was actually some, some differences that was actually measurable. So I did need to keep it to get the best quality at around 16K uh, thinking tokens but that can take a while because if you run it even in AI Studio, for example, you can generate a file for a very long time, but then you layer in tool calls and stuff on top of it. It can be, it can be quite slow to actually get through. Now, I'm just going to show a couple one-off demos before I close out this video here. Uh, so first off, this is the Gemini 2.5.0506 version of the pool game. It looks pretty good. The triangle is, diff is is wrong, right? Like it's pointing the wrong way. Let's take a look at what the physics are in this particular one. Um, one of the things I never know is like, is this me aiming and shooting? Okay, there we go. So in this particular version, uh, which actually was the first one I got that compiled at 0 0.5 temperature, because that, that is what I had found was the best temperature for this one. There's literally no physics. It just goes through the balls. It's insanely, insanely bad in my opinion. So, and this is taking forever, forever to stop. Now, let's put that side by side with the newest version of this. So let me go grab that. This is the latest version. This is correctly organized. I actually really like the way it's done. The eight ball is sitting nicely. They've got nice stripes in here. They've got a nice power meter. The physics are spot on. So I know this is just kind of like a one-off thing. And notice how the, the cue ball actually stopped at a reasonable time. It resets properly, uh, turns are switching. This is actually a really well, just one-off done. So this is sort of another data point to kind of put in there. It follows directions much better. It doesn't have as many tool call failures. The quality of the code is better, especially at 0 0.7 temperature, which is what I ran this at. I did actually do this test at lower temperature and higher temperature. The quality variance is pretty wild, to be honest with you. So I'd be curious to see what you kind of find as the ideal temperature for your use case. But I know in my test for AI assisted coding tools, 0 0.7 seems to be the clear winner for me, which makes a good argument for if you're going to use this model to use it in Groove code, because in things like Windsurf and Klein, you can't really adjust that much in that. So you really do want to be able to control the thinking, the output tokens for thinking, and you really do want to be able to control the temperature. And I know a lot of, not a lot of people are going to be able to uh, kind of understand what that all means, but you're going to get way worse results, in my opinion, by just keeping it at the default temperature settings. And maybe this is something that Windsurf and Klein can kind of default this model to just to kind of circumvent that so people don't have to tweak it. But I do really appreciate that about root code where I can actually fine tune and configure, you know, the, the right temperature setting. Anyway, I think that's going to give it, wrap it up. I'm impressed with this model overall. Again, it's not going to be the thing I'm probably going to use on a daily basis just because I'm having so much fun with Claude code. But I will say it is, it was quite fine using it all day Friday. I had no major issues. I did get a few two call failures. I did get a few things that were just odd, but that happens with every AI model, but it was actually usable. Whereas a 0506 model I had found to be quite unusable, specifically with tool calling. Anyway, I appreciate you all. And if you don't mind considering liking and subscribing, that would mean everything to me. 
Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Peace out.